A parley with Euraxia is a capital idea. I'll send word to Rimmon to expect us. I imagine my half-sister will treat us as befits my station and agree to the meeting. Attend to any other matters if you must, then see me when you're ready to leave. It just so happens I already have one. It involves distracting my half-sister with wit, charm, and words she barely comprehends. Oh, and you. Euraxia never could resist a pretty face. You'll pretend to be my bodyguard and personal valet. Consider it obfuscation to hide your true purpose. We don't want to give Euraxia a reason to react poorly to overtures of reconciliation. Not that I expect to reach an accord, but still. Meet me in Rimmon and we'll enter the palace together. Go on, go on. I'm capable of traveling to Rimmon on my own. We'll meet up at the city gates and go to the palace from there. I'm relatively certain Euraxia will honor the parley, but be prepared for anything. She's still a farm, after all. We're not very close, in case I haven't made that abundantly clear. Euraxia is an accomplished mage in her own right. My younger sibling has always been ambitious, but I didn't realize the extent of her aspirations until the Frostfall coup. About six years ago or so, while Emperor Varen was busy with his rebellion, Euraxia took advantage of the confusion to lead a column of Nibbanese mercenaries into northern elsewhere. She declared herself Queen of Rimmon and its adjacent fiefs. Of course not. The Khajiit call her the Usurper Queen, remember? Once Varen became Emperor, he had other problems to worry about. Same with Queen Irene. As long as the Alliance War occupies her forces, the Khajiit are on their own out here. This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still, Nalador sees the necessity, even if she doesn't like it. Euraxia will almost certainly betray you, so be careful when you face her, yes? By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Kajiti rulers, not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her crimes, they swarm around her like flesh flies on dung. A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very well. Take Tharn and meet with Euraxia. In the meantime, we will rebuild what remains of the militia. She marched into Anequina with a mercenary army and conquered Rimen. Her forces killed the royal family and she illegally proclaimed herself queen. That makes her a usurper. I pray I live to see her pay for her crimes. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes, but peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. It would be better if I showed you Follow me, and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimmon is far tighter than it appears. Very well. 
But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimen workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti workers worse than slaves. It's that building over there. For most of Rimen's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. The Rimin Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimen marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets. Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls. When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimen, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Absolutely not, but the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Ah, 
Here come Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Sumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The betrayer saw you when it looked through the soul shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark night that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now about the rest of my body, O oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. Presenting Abner Thar, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Tharn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, how proud. Your arrival, it's so... unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen... Hush, isn't... Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh, well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Oh, how Precious. I hoped my pompous half-brother would provide an amusement, but this is even better. I have a chamber set aside in the dungeons just for you. We'll play the most interesting games, you and I, until your body gives out. Do not presume to lecture me. I make the rules here, not you or Abner. I have a special relationship with Mulan Mir. An understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my half-brother can do to stop them. Enough! Zumog Fu, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. Well, I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. So we wound up down here. In the palace sewer. We heard two things of note. First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. 
One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold. The way out, finally. I can't abide another moment in this stretch. Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adaptorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhall. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted, well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Ree. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adaptorium. Adaptorium serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts follow the order of Jean Kaj. It's west of here, on the northern lip of the Scar. Look for a side entrance if the main door is blocked. Rigert knew he should have brought more mead.
No Uraxian enter this holy place. Invaders, this one will not allow you to enter this holy place. You do not look like one of the Usurper Queen's soldiers. Who are you, and what are you doing down here? The Speaker of the Main sent you? This one expected we were on our own, what with the dragons and the battles to the north. Zamarak came down here to seal this path, but now he thinks the Uraxians seek the Grand Adept. Desert Wind holds many Kajiti secrets, and the keeper of those secrets is the Grand Adept. If you truly want to help, follow Zamarak to the Grand Adept's chambers. Nine Winds, no! Get to the door! Go! Save the Grand Adept! Go! This one will find another way inside. You are too late. The Grand Adept revealed all before I killed her. 
You are no match for my power. You will fall like wheat before a blade. Take my soul! Zumog Foom! This is the necromancer's doing. Even in death, I continue to serve. He called it a blessing. Said it would protect me. Damn him! He claimed my soul! Please, you must help me. Release me from this curse! We came for an ancient secret. Protected by the Grand Adept. She put up a good fight. I'll give her that. Zumog Foom seeks the location of the betrayer's body parts. I learned where the dismembered corpse was hidden. Now, please, help me! You are wrong. The secret belongs to me. What the battle mage knew in life, she whispers to me in death. Soon, Riverhold will fall, and the betrayer will be restored. Let the fourth wind open the way. Grand Adept! No! Zamarak has failed. This one was... What has happened here? Who killed the Grand Adept? Zamarak thanks you for avenging the Grand Adept. But why did they attack this peaceful Adeptorium? Why kill a harmless old student of the Desert Winds? The Usurper Queen made a mistake when she had the Grand Adept killed. Whatever they came to find had an unintended consequence. It has roused the students of the Desert Winds. Zamarak pledges the Adepts to Garashri's cause. Euraxia will fall. We are not many, but we are strong. The Adepts of the Desert Wind will aid the city. Zamarak will see you there, after he makes sure the Grand Adept receives the proper blessings. What do you want?
I informed Garesh Ri and Kamira about what happened in Rimen. They're mobilizing our remaining forces even as we speak. Now tell me, what did you learn at the Desert Wind Adeptorium? I often wondered who Cadwell was before he became a soul shriven. I know the tales of the betrayer, but I never equated the two. The Cadwell we know is so not that. We'll deal with Zumog Foom after we save Riverhold. Anything else to report? Well, that's a bit of welcome news. Many of the adepts have remarkable martial skills that we could surely make use of. Speaking of which, are you ready to help defend the city? For now, recover your strength and prepare yourself. Euraxia's forces will arrive soon and will need you ready for the battle to come. And here, take this. Garish Ree keeps handing me pouches, but I have little use for Khajiiti gold.